The war between Russia and Ukraine started long before February 24, 2022. Russian aggression has been constant ever since Vladimir Putin came to power in the late 90s. However, it was the illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014 that started the current conflict. The crazy part is, NATO and the rest of the world just watched as Russian forces invaded Crimea in an eerily similar way to how Nazi Germany annexed Austria, Czechoslovakia, and the Rhineland before launching its invasion of Poland and starting World War II. In 2022, Russia invaded the rest of the country just like the Ukrainian government knew it would. There's no denying that Putin is to blame for the war in Ukraine. But the indifference by NATO and all the other countries around the world toward the illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014 makes them all, to a certain extent, complicit in the war today. Ukraine and its people have stood strong and fought bravely. There's no denying that Russia is losing the war, and that if Ukraine gets the support it needs from NATO, they'll be able to push Russia out of their borders. Make no mistake, Crimea is a part of Ukraine, and the government has made it clear that Ukraine will not stop fighting or enter any type of negotiations unless all of its territories are returned. The problem for Putin is that if he allows Crimea to once again rejoin Ukraine, it would not only lead to his downfall but the collapse of Russia. Russia needs Crimea for several reasons, but Putin needs it more than ever if he's going to make it through the war and maintain his power in Russia. Let's examine why Russia wanted Crimea so badly in the first place, what would happen if it lost the Crimean Peninsula to Ukraine, and how it might be possible for Ukraine to achieve this goal. Crimea has a complicated history. Its location in the Black Sea has been sought after for hundreds of years, and even though its history goes back millennia, it was during the Russian-Turkish War from 1768 to 1774 that marked the beginning of the chain of events that have led to where we are today. At the end of that war, Crimea proclaimed independence from Turkey. However, in 1783, Russia incorporated the region into its borders to make use of its ports and to house the Russian Black Sea Fleet, which is still located in Sevastopol today. After this point in time, Crimea periodically faced tragedy at the hands of Russia all the way until today. As the 19th century came to an end, Russia completed its construction of the railway across Crimea to Sevastopol. This allowed for easier trade with European markets, making Russia a lot of profit as it exported basic goods and imported luxury goods for its elite. It was also at this point that Crimea became the summer residence of the Russian imperial family, where those in power could enjoy the region at their leisure. And though Russia no longer has a monarchy with a royal family, this era created a deep desire for wealthy Russians to control Crimea. The early 20th century was a turbulent time in Europe and the surrounding region, including Crimea. Civil wars broke out and Nazi Germany decimated the population and the lands of the peninsula as Hitler's war machine marched across its border in an attempt to defeat Russia. The population of Crimea was cut nearly in half, and its ports were all but destroyed. When the war ended, Crimea was incorporated into the Soviet Union. It was in 1954 that things got exceptionally complicated for the Crimean Peninsula, and it was this time period that Russia sometimes cites as one of the reasons why Crimea belongs to them. As the Communist Party restructured the borders and the lands of the Soviet Union, Crimea was transferred from the jurisdiction of the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic to the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. This still meant that Crimea was under the control of the Kremlin, but the Ukrainian territory within the Soviet Union would oversee most of the governing of the region. Throughout the Cold War, the fallen industries and infrastructure of Crimea were rebuilt, and it once again began to hold key strategic and economic significance for Russia. However, in 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed and the Western territories were given autonomy from Moscow, Ukraine became a sovereign nation. And since Crimea was a designated part of Ukraine by Nikita Khrushchev in the 1950s, it was technically no longer a part of Russia. This was unacceptable to the incoming regime, and it would only take a little over a decade before this relatively small peninsula would find itself invaded by Russia. In 2014, Vladimir Putin annexed the region, even though the rest of the world had agreed Crimea was a part of Ukraine. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. Ever since 2014, Crimea has not only been the source of conflict but an incredibly crucial territory for Russia. Since it was illegally seized by Putin, Crimea went back to its former role of being an economic, military, and leisure hub for the Kremlin. There are many reasons why Vladimir Putin will never willingly give up Crimea, and many of them go back to the Russian Empire that first incorporated the region into Russia's borders. Once Putin controlled Crimea, new infrastructure connecting the Russian mainland to the peninsula was constructed to make moving goods, supplies, and military units to the area easier. It also allowed for an excellent staging ground for Russia's invasion of the rest of Ukraine, which was almost certainly already being planned back in 2014. When he invaded Crimea, Putin may have been testing the waters to see how the world would react to him illegally annexing a part of his neighbor. And when there was no repercussions for his actions, 
he knew that his invasion of Ukraine would likely be met with similar indifference. For Russia, Crimea serves not only as a staging ground for soldiers, but a vital part of the supply chain that ensures troops currently holding the Donbass region of the country are properly equipped and fed. It's here that Russia has been launching attacks further into Ukraine for the past several months, and where troops are currently dug in until reinforcements and equipment can be sent. What this means is that Crimea is a key strategic location for Russia's future plans in Ukraine. Without controlling Crimea, Russia would lose the ability to easily move tanks and weapons to their front lines. Putin knows this, which is why even as Ukrainian forces launch missiles and bomb bridges in Crimea, Russia refuses to allow any show of weakness in the region. The moment Ukraine retakes Crimea, the war will be lost for Russia. This will come with a huge military and political consequence for Putin, which is why he's so desperate to hold on to the Crimean Peninsula. Along with being a resupply hub, Crimea acts as a missile launching ground for Russia. The missiles they've deployed to the peninsula are relatively well protected at the moment and can hit key targets in Ukraine. The air bases in Crimea also allow Russian planes and drones to carry out bombing runs as far away as Kyiv. The only reason that Russia can constantly harass major Ukrainian cities is because of its occupation of Crimea. But the most important military aspect of Crimea for Russia comes from the port city of Sevastopol, where Russia's Black Sea Fleet resides. Russia's used this group of naval ships to blockade Ukraine, cutting off supply routes along its coast. Aid is still reaching Ukraine through other means, but the control of the Black Sea, made possible by Russia controlling a major port in Crimea, has severely crippled the Ukrainian economy and its ability to bring supplies into the country. Sevastopol is one of Russia's only warm water ports, meaning it can be used year-round. This is important, not only for its military, but for trade as well. Crimea is in a prime location on the Black Sea to receive goods from North Africa and the Middle East. It also allows Russia to move cargo into and out of the Mediterranean. Without Crimea, Russia would not be able to maintain control over the Black Sea. Its naval ships have been used to bombard ports as well as coastal cities, and even though Ukraine has sunk the Russian flagship Moskva, they don't have the naval capability to break the blockades put in place. So Crimea is clearly important for the Russian military and economy, but there's another more insane reason that Putin believes it was his right to seize the peninsula. Vladimir Putin has said numerous times he wants to bring back the former glory of the Russian Empire. This is one of the reasons he so desperately wanted to take Crimea in the first place. By incorporating the peninsula back into Russian borders, he was paying tribute to Catherine the Great and the Russian Empire of the late 1700s. Of course, Putin wanted Crimea for its strategic significance, but he also wanted to show the people of Russia and the rest of the world he was capable of expanding Russian borders to create his own Russian Empire. The craziest part was that independent polls conducted in 2018 showed that 86% of Russians supported the forced annexation of Crimea. This was likely due to the brainwashing and misinformation campaigns carried out by state-controlled media, but the support for reincorporating Crimea back into Russia was staggering. For decades, Crimea was used as a playscape for the Russian elite, and even in recent times, it's become a popular tourist destination due to its beautiful coastlines and temperate climate. These factors definitely had less impact on Putin's decision to illegally annex the region, but you can't help but wonder if he had dreams of sitting at a resort in Crimea while brainstorming ways to take over the world. Putin will also do anything he can to reduce Western influence anywhere near Russia's borders. Seizing Crimea meant the trade networks between Europe and Ukraine were severely disrupted. Just by incorporating the relatively small piece of land into Russia, Putin found a way to stop further encroachment by the West on what he saw to be his sphere of influence. Goods from Western countries coming into the region via Crimea were not something that Putin wanted, and by holding the territory he ensured that Western influence was placated while growing his own influence in the region. Like with many parts of the world seized by powerful countries, Crimea holds vast amounts of resources that Russia needs. In particular, Crimea has a large source of natural gas and oil. Both of these things are necessary to keep the Russian economy going. But controlling the peninsula also serves another purpose. After Putin annexed Crimea, he could control where the oil and natural gas for the region was going. This meant that European nations that once received some of their energy resources from Ukraine, and Crimea in particular, would no longer have the option of buying these resources from Ukraine. It was Russia or nothing. Putin would literally do anything to disrupt Western society. After he gained control of Crimea, anyone who procured natural gas and oil from the region of the world in effect would be paying Russia. It also allowed Russia to control distribution, which severely hurt Ukraine's economy and caused them to lose access to an area that provided the nation with a large percentage of its energy. Ever since Putin seized Crimea, he effectively declared an economic war on Ukraine. It was terrible that he was allowed to get away with so much. 
as the Ukrainian people have been suffering at the hands of Putin for much longer than just the past year. It's clear why Russia wanted Crimea and why it's so important. But what would happen if Ukraine managed to retake the peninsula and push Russian forces out of the region? The initial benefits would be that if Ukraine could reclaim the Donbas region and Crimea, it would mean that they secured all the lands that Russia stole from them. Ukraine would also now control the resources, ports, and land that would provide the country with a much-needed economic boost. All the strategic benefits that Russia now enjoys because of Crimea would go to Ukraine. They would be able to use the ports, airstrips, and bridges into Russia for their own military objectives. If Ukraine reclaimed Crimea, it would pretty much mean that Russia had lost the war. But there's a much bigger problem for Russia and Putin if Ukraine takes back Crimea. Vladimir Putin used the annexation of Crimea as a way to prove to the Russian people that he could bring back the might of the Russian Empire. If he were to lose Crimea, it would throw everything he promised out the window. This would be something that not even the state-controlled media could spin into a positive. If Ukraine was able to secure Crimea, it would clearly show that Russia was not as strong as Vladimir Putin claimed it to be. The population is already hurting from the sanctions placed on the country, while all available resources are being poured into the war effort. So if the war ends up being a failure, the people of Russia will understandably become incredibly angry. There are already mass protests against the war breaking out across Russia. Huge numbers of talented workers, free thinkers, and people trying to avoid conscription are fleeing to neighboring countries. If Putin were to lose Crimea, it would be the end of his reign in Russia. The psychopathic dictator has surrounded himself with a series of protections that keep a coup from overthrowing his regime. But losing Crimea might be the one thing that could shatter Putin's coup-proof government. As Russia experiences defeat after defeat in Ukraine, Putin has continually blamed his generals and military advisors. Although he was warned before the initial invasion that Ukraine might be harder to defeat than anyone wanted to admit. But Putin being Putin, decided to ignore the warnings and did whatever he wanted. Now the mad dictator of Russia is regretting those decisions. Putin and top officials in his government can continue to blame and replace the heads of military units because of their shortcomings, but if Russia loses Crimea, every military leader with power will look to blame the Kremlin for their failures. It's unlikely that the coup will come from within the military, but if soldiers and generals are pushed hard enough and everything they fought for begins to slip away, it could spell the end of the current Russian administration. Soldiers and their commanders would be disheartened and embarrassed. They would seek to blame someone, and to them it would be extraordinarily clear who is at fault for this whole mess. Perhaps there would be an assassination attempt on Putin's life, or maybe generals in the battlefield would carry out secret meetings to find a way to overthrow the government. However, even though it's a remote possibility, the most likely scenario that could destroy Russia if Crimea was lost would be a popular uprising. In the minds of the Russian people, Crimea belongs to them. And since Putin made the promise to bring Crimea and the rest of Ukraine back under Russian control, anything short of this would make the general public question his leadership. This, mixed with the pain and suffering that the Russian people are experiencing due to the war, would likely be enough for a popular uprising to get started. The loss of Crimea could be the match that lights the fire within the Russian people. It would be clear that Putin has been lying this entire time, that the war was not going according to plan, and that Russia was not as strong under his leadership as he claimed it to be. The population would begin rebelling, tearing the country apart. If Putin had any plans of invading Crimea to take it back, they'd be put on hold as every available soldier would need to be deployed within Russia itself to stop the uprisings. However, at that point, it would be too late. And if Russia loses Crimea and the Russian people start to revolt, it would be all over for Putin and anyone who allied himself with him. Crimea is incredibly important for Russia due to its strategic value the amount of resources it provides, and the key role it plays in the narrative around rebuilding a Russian empire. If Ukraine's able to retake its land and push Russian forces out, it would most likely lead to the destruction of the status quo in Russia right now. So the question becomes, can Ukraine retake Crimea? And if so, how would they do it? According to President Volodymyr Zelensky, it's not a question of if, but of when. Ukraine must take back everything Russia stole from it, including Crimea and it seems like Zelensky is going to keep good on his word, as Ukrainian forces have already begun to attack targets on the peninsula. Artillery strikes and missiles have already hit military installations and key strategic locations that Russia holds in Crimea. One of their biggest wins was the attack that damaged the Kirk Strait Bridge, which disrupted the supply lines that Russia was using to get weapons and resources to their troops in the Donbas region of Ukraine. This dealt a huge blow to the Russian war effort, but it also was a personal attack on Putin. We know it sounds crazy, but Putin loved that bridge like he literally loved it. In 2018, Russian movie makers created the film The Crimean Bridge Made With Love. 
which is a love story where the Kerch Strait Bridge plays a major role in the plot. Vladimir Putin is a weird dude, but this movie takes things to a whole new level. Like everything else in Russia, the movie was made under the oversight of the Kremlin, and if you're thinking that the movie must be absolutely terrible, you'd be right. In it, a young, darling builder falls in love with a female archaeology student. Unfortunately, a PR man from Moscow brings American television crews to film the Kerch Strait Bridge, which the main character is working on. Somehow, this creates a love triangle that ends up being the fault of the Americans. It's a convoluted love story that includes anti-Western propaganda and is centered around the Kerch Strait Bridge. We honestly can't make this stuff up. Vladimir Putin and his regime are insane and clearly have terrible taste in movies. Back in reality, the destruction of the Kerch Strait Bridge was a huge win for Ukraine, but their victories didn't stop there. While Russia scrambles to dig in and hold the territory that they seized in the initial invasion, Ukrainian forces are continually dealing damage to the Russian war machine. In October 2022, reports came in that Ukraine had launched drones that disabled three warships stationed in Sevastopol. Like the Russian tanks and artillery, their naval ships seem to be vulnerable to Ukrainian tactics and weapons. However, even though it's clear that Ukraine is capable of dealing damage to Russian forces from afar, invading the Crimean Peninsula will be a whole other matter. Crimea is connected to mainland Ukraine by a small strip of land that's only 5 miles wide. This means that if Ukraine launches a ground-based attack, they'll have to travel across this checkpoint, which will undoubtedly be heavily fortified by Russian forces. There are other ways to get into Crimea, such as by boat or via airdrops, but an invasion will definitely be costly in terms of lives lost and the number of resources spent to take the peninsula. Right now, Ukraine does not have the aircraft or the amphibious vehicles to make invading Crimea possible, and the leadership likely wouldn't consider trying to take the peninsula until Russian forces have been pushed out of the Donbass region. One way that Ukraine could secure Crimea is if they cut off the supplies coming into the region by destroying the Kerch Strait Bridge and securing the major ports on the peninsula. This obviously will not be easy, but it would allow Ukraine to severely weaken the Russian position in Crimea. If Russia doesn't have the ability to resupply the troops on the peninsula, Ukraine could just continue to bombard key military positions from the mainland and then wait until Russian forces either surrendered or became weak enough that an invasion would be successful. However, Ukraine would need to gain access to medium and long-range missiles to carry out this type of attack successfully. Currently, NATO countries are hesitant to give Ukraine these types of weapons and fear that it might escalate things further. If they had access to long-range missiles, there is the possibility that Ukraine would use these weapons to attack targets deep within Russia such as Moscow. This seems unlikely, as Ukraine only seems to be focused on retaking the land Russia invaded, but this is war, and Russia has committed countless atrocities in Ukraine ever since it invaded Crimea. If Ukraine got their hands on long-range missiles, they would almost certainly use them to strike targets in Crimea, but there's also a real possibility they would launch them across the border into Russia as well. This brings us to what would happen if Putin felt he was about to lose Crimea. As we already know, this would likely be the end of his brutal dictatorship, and as we also know, Putin will do everything in his power to keep this from happening. So, if the war took a turn for the worst for Russia and Ukrainian forces looked as if they were about to invade Crimea, it's possible Vladimir Putin would escalate things to the next level and use weapons that the world has feared ever since they were first dropped at the end of World War II. Russia has a massive amount of nuclear weapons. It's estimated that Russia has stockpiled around 6,000 nuclear warheads. Some of these are tactical nukes, which have a significantly smaller yield than strategic nuclear weapons. A 1 kiloton tactical nuke would have a blast radius of around 300 yards. This is more than enough to wipe out an entire Ukrainian unit and decimate any armor or structures in the area. A 10 kiloton tactical nuke would have a blast radius a third of a mile, which could destroy entire airfields, bases, or towns. These weapons are terrifying, and if Putin decided to use them, it could lead to a much larger conflict with NATO getting directly involved. Then again, this isn't the scary scenario. If Ukraine was in a position to successfully take Crimea and Putin knew Russia wouldn't be able to hold the peninsula, he might feel backed into a corner, and we all know what happens when a wild animal feels threatened. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Putin would launch strategic nukes with payloads in excess of one megaton. These nuclear weapons could be 1,000 times stronger than the two nuclear bombs dropped on Japan in World War II and could wipe out entire cities. There's no doubt Ukraine could take Crimea if they get the weapons and support they need from Western nations. If Crimea was recaptured by Ukraine, it would reunify a nation that had been illegally torn apart by Vladimir Putin back in 2014. However, it would also likely be the end of the current regime's rule. 
This may be unacceptable for those in power in Russia, which could lead them to do all kinds of crazy things. As much as most of the world wants to see Crimea reunified with Ukraine and the war ended, the retaking of the peninsula by Ukrainian forces could lead to a nuclear war that expands out of the borders of Russia and Ukraine. Now watch why are Russian tanks failing in Ukraine, or check out this is how the Russian war in Ukraine ends.